Hello, welcome back to another terrible YouTube video. This one is about my Renault Safran and the reasons why I bought her. To do that, we need to cast our mind back to December 2019, which when the world seemed a very different place. I had an email from a good motoring writer telling me that he knew of a Safran which was available and did I know anybody who would want it? Which That kind of question is like catnip to a cat. Um, I asked the fateful question, you know, can you give me the reg plate and is, are there any photographs of it? Um, and I got a few photos and the body looked in surprisingly good nick considering it's been sat in London since 2001, or sat outside in London since 2001. And when I looked at the MOT history, I was, I was amazed. It doesn't look like the a kind of this MOT history you'd expect from a Renault Safran or any Renault of this vintage. There were a few advisories along the way, but really nothing out of the ordinary. So I was really, really keen. So I spoke to the owner on the phone, and again, I just got this good impression that he cared for the car. Um, he spoke very kindly about it, didn't really want to sell her. I was only selling her really because driving a car in London is becoming harder and harder, especially especially old two litre petrol Renaults. So the rest is history really. That's, that's the reason why I bought her. Um, partly to, to rescue her. Partly because I've always had this inkling to buy, have, to buy a big Renault. The chances of buying a Renault 25 are getting slimmer and slimmer. Uh, I'm not going to be getting a Renault 30 anytime soon, a Renault 16. So this is probably... I do a lot of pointing, don't I? Um, like Alan Sugar again, you're fired. It's probably the best chance I'm going to get of driving or owning a big Renault. Let's um, let's go back to let's go let's go back in time to J July 1998. Let's put, let's put this in the marketplace. Here we go. So in July 1998, when this car was registered, well actually June 1998, there or thereabouts, this car would have cost twenty one thousand two hundred thirty five pound. I don't think the original owner paid for that. I think it was a fleet car. The mileage it was certainly suggests that the first three years were motorway miles. So most of the miles on this car were done in the first three years. It's on 134,000 miles an hour. Let's get in and check in a minute. So it was very much the mid-range Safran, as you can see, sitting between the top of the range 2.5 executive and the two liter 16 valve. So you paid a 2,000 pound premium for the <coughs> executive spec, which we will show you down the little badge down the side. But um, in terms of getting more for your money, 3,000 pound extra for the 2.5 version got you things like electric, uh, heater controls for the for the rear seats uh, a voice synthesizer was another thing you got for it got extra um, and obviously the the more powerful engine although when you look at the more powerful engine 170 brake horsepower plays 138 but the 0-60 time is really really close really close like 0.3 seconds and the top speed is really only relevant to to German customers and non-compliant French presidents um, but you got a four miles per gallon uh, deficit I think obviously the noise makes a big difference. That is a fabulous engine, that 2.5. Um, but beggars can't be choosers, especially in this day and age. And it's interesting weed in the car magazine's verdict. Massive inside, very smooth, very quiet, theoretically good value. But of course the biggest thing was vast depreciation and no fun. I don't think many people would have bought a Safran looking for fun. I suppose if they did, they would buy a, they'd probably buy a 5 Series, a much more expensive 5 Series. Hopeless new, used lots of barge for the franc. Two stars seems a bit harsh with hindsight, um, but big Renaults, well, they weren't, well, any big French car at the time weren't really loved. Um, interesting that, and that's about, um, that was the Ford Cougar. An interesting article there where they took a Capri to Monaco, which is always good. Uh, another good another good point behind this car is the service history. I'm not going to go through it because of data protection. Um, there's lots of, lots of addresses on there. But the service history is, again, have I used the word phenomenal yet? This is phenomenal. It goes back to 2001, and everything that had to be done on this car was done at some point and not just sort of left until the next MOT it was done so if the wipers started making a weird noise it was booked in for a wipe motor within days um, everything everything has been done uh, so it's very much a triggers broom Safran uh, it's also good to see the original service book and the original look look at this look look Safran oh the zoom the zoom there we go, Safran. And also, this is, this is you're like this. Probably some of you may have seen this before, but look, this is the original Renault owner's handbook. It's got things like days out with your, with your Renault. So you can go to the Civil War at Scarborough Castle. 
or the Vikings at Bolsover Castle. And it says here, this is very topical for this, for this what we, world we're living in. Getting out and about and making the most of your Renault is all important. Well, not today we're not. We're stuck here in lockdown with the rest of the world. Um, but this is, yeah, these are different times when you, when you could buy, oh, look, look, look at that. Beautiful. Uh, the kind of car that we, that we love here on Petrol Blog. And that's it's quite weird. You and your Renault, grand days out. In Air February, they must have had nothing because they had St. Valentine's Day, Shrove Tuesday and Ash Wednesday, which I don't know what that got to do with your car. But then when you get to December, they haven't mentioned Christmas, just the Oxford versus Cambridge Rugby Union match. Some very strange decisions to do with your Renault. Uh, and also, I want to show you this, look, the original. Look at that. So yeah, it's all in there. All the original books, all the original history. Uh, and that's the kind of thing that, that well, I know, I know p readers of Petrol Blog, viewers, now viewers of Petrol Blog will appreciate. Uh, but we'll put that away. What you want to see really is the car, don't you? I've put the car in the, in, in the barn just because it's quite windy. Um, so it could interfere with things. But there we go. She's been washed this morning for the for the video. In answer to David Austin of Lobster... Oh, that's terrible. That's sunlight. In answer to David Austin, no, the lights aren't yellow yet. Well, they will be. Um, that will be done during the lockdown at some point. So, moving on. I know at some point, because the service history told me, it's had a, it's had a respray bonnet. Uh, the match is excellent. It's a pearlescent black, um, which will cut, when I bring it out of the garage, you'll see, but it's got some lovely, lovely detailing in the paint. So it's been painted at some point, which I can guess in would be for stone chips, bearing in mind the mileage. This is a nice, nice thing. I like this the little executive badge there. Um, I've, done the, I've done the black today and I'll show you what I use for that in a bit when I take it out because it's really good stuff you need rubber gloves which we'll come on to in a bit but it's really good stuff uh, so what I've done since I've bought her is just sort of polished the paint back one layer and just given it a layer of wax and as you can see it's really really good very very few ripples in the paint very few dents there are a few I just saw one there just you can see it but that's understandable and to be honest I don't care about that sort of thing anymore um, I used to those sort of things would worry me they don't anymore because it's, it's a car. It's going to have war. It's going to have war scars. It's going to have battle scars, and it's all part of its character. It's part of its heritage. A bit like the bullets on um, Elaine Beige. Um, the back, the back is an absolute win. Look at it. It's just beautiful the way it's come up. Phenomenal, really, because then it's been stuck outside in Clapham since 2001. The paint is absolutely amazing. Again, the original Fish Brothers dealership in Swindon things are pretty good down this side too there's very few blemishes or marks down the paintwork which is good to see just looks in remarkably good condition he's remarkably a lot haven't I in this video there's some stain in there which I think is a water coming down from the it's like there's something that could be something missing there you just have a look at that there's definitely some stain in there which I'll try and get off at some point um, but as I said in the last video, I love that view of the car for some reason. I think that this bit here just looks, just pulls together quite nicely. But yeah, it's in good condition, I think. Still think that's one of the best views of the car. Apologies, the lighting's not great. But yeah, let's I'll tell you what we need to do. We haven't done yet is it's on the money shot. We need to look at the, we need to look at her because I get very excited about silly things like this with the fog lights on. They should come on with that. Oh, well, can you hear that noise? The world's quietest lights on buzzer. It's almost like a little poke in the arm saying, Oh, don't forget you left your lights on. Makes change from those horrible ones you get nowadays. But look, if that doesn't do things to you, you're watching the wrong video. That just works. And yes, David Austin, there will be yellow fog lights soon. That's going to have to happen. But yeah, that just works. Who wants a German executive car when it looks that good? I think, I think the thing we need to do really is get her out of the garage. And I'll take you through the things I love about the inside because ultimately, when it comes to French executive cars, it's all about the interior. So we'll fire her up, which I don't think we've done on this video, on this channel yet. We'll just fire her up. go that's where you pray the lights go out which they do 
Let's see what they're. So 134,550 miles. Who says French cars are unreliable and dead by the time they get to 100,000? So it's in the open. Lighting's going to be pretty bad now, isn't it? I'll go back a little bit. I'll get a little bit of shade. There we go. Okay, so I'll just take you around. They don't even want to hear the exhaust, some people like that, that sort of thing. You gotta love frosted glass, frosted lights, smoke lights, look at that. Just works, doesn't it? Just works. Just a lovely, lovely thing. I'll switch you off. What a die of poisoning in my garage. And I'll take you through the inside in a sec. Okay. First thing I want to show you about the inside is this. This door handle, it's great. It's, it's almost like something out of a French spaceship. And the nice thing about it is when you're driving, you put your arm on there, on this, because this is a door pocket, massively deep door pockets. And it's so comfortable for your arm and your hand rests there. And look at the way the electric window switches are sort of aimed towards the driver. It's just a lovely touch. Lots of leather, lots of creaky leather. And do you know what I really like about this interior is despite, despite its age, and mileage there's no creaks and rattles from the from the plastics it's just unbelievably good it's very plasticky in places but i think it's aged pretty well i think the line design and layout was aged pretty well i mean it's no renault 25 which looks like the kind of interior jean-michel jarre would design but it's it's more practical i guess uh, it's definitely more contemporary for mid 90s and it still holds together quite well and these seats well, until you sat in a Safran seat, you can't, it won't do it justice. Initially, they feel quite firm, but then it sort of just molds to your bum. And it's so comfortable, seriously so comfortable. I think only the Saab 9000, of all the cars I've owned, is more comfortable than this. It's just phenomenal, the seats. It's, they're not, the Mercedes are quite springy and quite spongy, whereas this, you kind of sit on it. It's kind of supportive, but also comfortable, which is, I think, what the French do so well. I'm going to open the door because it's surprisingly warm. And so what did Mr. What did Mr. French executive man get in 1998? Well, proper climate control, proper dual climate control, his and hers, or his and his, her and her. This is 2020 now. And you can change from centigrade to Fahrenheit. Nice little touch. And your, ex your outside temperature sits up there. Uh, Obviously, this is Renault's fascination with hiding things away, so you have to press to release the radio. The radio does work, he says. Yeah. No idea what that rubbish is, so we'll turn that off. But it works. Um, this is, has anyone else experienced this on a car of this age? It's horribly sticky. It's just horrible. I mean, if I put my jeans on it, you can hear it. It literally gets stuck to it, and you've got this horrible sticky residue. I don't know what to do with it. It's horrid. I don't know if you can recover it, but it is disgusting. Um, it's horrible when you're driving along, you just suddenly get this, ugh. Um, talking about the, the fixes, so it has got air conditioning, but it doesn't, it obviously stopped working because they've had to put this override switch in. So what you get, you still get you can still get temperature control so you can still change the temperature and it does work so you can go all the way up to 26 or maximum all the way down to 16 and the temperature does work but there's no fan setting so you it's either on or off which i'll be honest is quite irritating um so i just tend to put it on auto um but yeah that's better than nothing like, um, because it does work to clear the windscreen or clear the um the car when it's misted up so, but yeah, he spent some money doing that. He didn't leave it. And again, that's, I think that speaks volumes about the, gen the gentleman who owned it. And also the reason why it's in remarkably good condition is because things like that were fixed. This button here is for your cruise control and things are controlled via here. So you can adjust your speed and turn it on or off underneath here. And it's got the very familiar um, volume controls for the audio 
uh, which are also in the Laguna, the clear. I still believe, I think they're in the Alpine. You can still get them in the brand new Alpine. So that's been going many, many years. So as you can see, the air conditioning, the lights, the little light is still working on and off. So yeah, at least we've got air conditioning. Don't know why I just proved that again, pointless. So we'll turn that off. Oh, yes, another little, this is a, again, this is a bit hit and miss, but you've got, yeah, sometimes it decides it doesn't want to stay up, sometimes it does. So it stayed up, and then sometimes you have to get it in just the right place, otherwise it just drops down again. Um, so it tends to be down more than it's up, as the actress said to the bishop. So we'll just turn off the ignition. Got a little tray up there, uh, no glove box. Uh, so you've got door pockets and door bins instead, and slightly loose. I haven't got any mats. If anyone knows of any Safran mats, um, I'll be great, grateful. Uh, you do get a map pocket, which I think is for a map pocket. So you could put your mobile phone in it now, put your smartphone in there. You used to have something here. I'm probably, what do you think? Car phone, cup holder, maybe, because there are no cup holders in 1998 and they're Safran. And then you've got this squishy cushion, which is like those really comfortable chairs you get in like a, a, a lawyer's or solicitor's waiting room. Really, really comfortable. Uh, not very deep, actually. I thought you might like this. Um, one of the things I noticed for Chris Wall after I bought it is there was plenty of water in here. Despite filling, despite clearing the drainage holes on the sunroof, there was plenty of water underneath this mat. And I think it's been pulled up before, so it's obviously been an issue before. Um, but when I was looking under the mat, I found this original build sheet. Fourth of, is that fourth of? February 1998 so it's a nice bit of history which I keep and I've left the drainage plug out um, it's probably dry now well, in fact I know it's dry now but yeah that was a bit of a problem which I'll need to sort out we'll just swing around to the back and get into the back so very much a cheap seats in the fact that you don't get electric windows in the back kids weren't that important in mid 90s France late 90s France but it, again, like those, that seat's in my, in my position. Not a great deal of legroom for a car this size. Um, I am quite tall, to be fair. But again, the seats are comfortable. I got a bit of wood. Look at the way it contours round. It's a neat touch. So you put your hand there. So when you're doing the, when you're doing the keep fit windows, which are really, really stiff. There we go. Most kids will hate the fact they don't go all the way down. But hey, less to go wrong on, a, on an old Renault, which is reason to be cheerful. No place for your for cigarettes if you're a kid. I think I've done some of this before. That's where the um, heater controls would have been on the on the 2.5 version. But plenty of headroom. I do like these. Do like these as well. These adjustable headrest head restraints. But yeah, it's properly posh in the back. It feels nice. It does feel nice. Not sure if I'd want to sit. God, no, I wouldn't want to sit here too long. You feel quite high up. But look at that. Look at that interior. That's beautiful. I'm going to take a photograph of that as a video. Beautiful. I said beautiful. I mean, we all do petrol blog word bingo. Phenomenal. Fabulous. Beautiful. Words I use too much. Uh, we'll jump into the boot. I just realised I said jump into the boot. I'm not about to do that. But I am going to open the tailgate. And one thing you'll notice immediately... Be careful here because there's not much room in here. One thing you'll notice immediately is it is a hatchback. Whereas most executive cars of the era were saloons, this is very much a hatchback, which gives you a huge amount of space to load things into. Really, really heavy, by the way. Heavy tailgate. But loads of space. Uh, two things I want to show you. This is a godsend if you've got any car with a sunroof of this era. It's a little squeegee thing for cleaning the windows. That's been a godsend over the winter. I recommend that. And the, the black stuff I told you about. I recommend this stuff. I can't remember how much it costs because I got sent some of it to, to review. I don't think it's cheap. I'm thinking sort of 15, 20 quid. But you don't need a lot. But you do need yellow gloves or rubber gloves. Any colour will do. But it does a really, really good job. Better than a lot of the cheap stuff you get in the, um, in the shops. But yeah, cavernous boot, which you can't see because it's dark. But it is, trust me on this, it's a cavernous boot. Plenty for the going to Carrefour to pick up your French bread and wine. Um, I think I've waffled on too long or too much, so I think we'll leave it. I think those is that a good enough tour of the Fran? Tell me if not for the next video because I do something different. 
but yeah, that is that is a frame. What should we do next? Camry? Mercedes? You tell me. I'm really not sure if these videos are any good. But we'll crack on. Because, you know, some people might like them. Thanks for watching. Oh, a couple of things I want to say. Um, thank you to Kenny Smith. I've j I set up a um, Patreon. I am denied about, I mean, I'm denied about setting up a Patreon account for, for years. Um, but I took the plunge this week, which is probably a really bad time to do it, bearing in mind the state the world's in at the moment. But I thought, you know, people might want to, to chuck in the funds if they like the content. So thank you to Kenny for being the first Patreon. It's much appreciated. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. See you soon. Take care.